If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. So this is the inaugural episode of the Spirit Guides podcast. Woo, 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 right? Yeah. So we're super excited, and let me just explain to you how the Spirit Guides podcast is going to work. We are going to be doing five days a week on this. In case you wanted to binge, you're going to be happy in binge heaven, right? So day one is Awaken, and Awaken is all about doing your inner work. It's all about finding your inner gifts. It's all about talking to your spirit guides and doing the magics that we know we can do, right? So that's day one. That's that's Mondays. Tuesdays is going to be tap in Tuesdays, tune in Tuesdays. And so on tune in Tuesdays, we are going to do some journaling. We may do some meditation. We're going to do a lot of things that allow you to connect with yourself. They will be much shorter episodes. So it will be longer episodes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, shorter episodes, Tuesday, Thursday, so that you have whatever it is that you want to do, right? Wednesdays is going to be a line and we're going to be talking about how do I take, how do I find my mission? How do I bring that mission into the world? How do I up level the planet? How do I bring, bring the, the spirituality that I have embraced in my life into the world around me? And then Thursdays are going to be thought thought thursdays thursday thoughts i'm yeah i'm i can say this really thursday thoughts (laughs) and so thursday thoughts are going to be about really just like thoughts for you to consider it's going to be inspiration and you know excerpts from different things that i've talked about over the years and just things for you to contemplate for your day Uh, again that's going to be a shorter day and then Fridays are ascend and those are the days when I'm going to like share my magic with you. So those will be sound healings and setting circles and I'll be doing readings. In fact, that's one of the things that we're going to do for the first eight weeks of this program is if you are reviewing, we're actually going to do a drawing and you might be able to be somebody who gets a reading with me on air. So make sure you rate and, and review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts has to be one of those two in order for you to qualify. And you'll you'll get the instructions in, in a little bit. But the the upshot is that I will be doing readings, I'll be doing corporate intuitive work, I'll be doing all sorts of fun stuff. So that'll be Friday. So this is the new Spirit Guides podcast. And I'm so excited to have you here. My name is Kelly Sparta. I am a transformational shaman. I have been doing this work my, well, my mother said that I was talking to ghosts in my crib. She brought home Est and Seth and Ram Das and Abraham Hicks and JC Knight and all of those things, messages from Michael. I don't even remember all the stuff, but I started studying when I was five years old. I've been doing self-hypnosis since I was 10. I've been reading tarot cards since I was 12. And, and this, is, this isn't what I do. It's who I am. I literally have high school yearbook signatures that read like my client testimonials. So this is when people are like, how long have you been doing this? I'm like, ah, kind of my whole life, right? And so, you know, my mission on the planet is to help up level the planet along with a lot of other people who are on the planet right now. There are 100,000 of us on the planet right now who are here to do that work. And if you're curious, if you're one of the 100,000, here are the symptoms. You had a spiritual awakening. You woke up and you went, oh, I have this massive mission. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I feel completely inadequate to the task. And I'm pretty sure I'm late. I'm very, very late. And there's this like panic that sets in on top of it. If you have had that experience, then you are one of the hundred thousand. And that is part, we have a collective mission to up level the planet. So don't panic. That big mission you felt is not all yours. We are doing the heavy lifting together. This is why we are collecting together into this process. So I am here to help up level the planet in form of, you know, doing the work myself with students, but also in the form of helping the hundred thousand to, 
to get their message out into the world, to be able to speak with clarity, to be able to own their power, to be able to step into their gifts, to be able to do all this work at a deeper level. So uh, we will be talking from both angles on this part of the podcast. We will be talking both from a, I'm just waking up and what do I do? And we'll also be talking from the, you know, hey, I'm, I'm further along in my journey and now what? So this, this part of the podcast is going to run the gamut and that's on purpose. And it's because the, you're the same people, right? The same people have those experiences and it's just at different levels of your evolution. And so even if it's something that we're talking about that you're not quite there yet, it'll give you a hint of what's to come. And, you know, we'll, if there's something that, that is not meant for beginners, we will say, this is not a beginner's podcast. Go back and listen to the beginning instead, right? Because that's one of those things that, that you're going to have to pay attention to. So I'm super excited to be here. Josh, do you want to introduce yourself since this is our inaugural episode? Uh, yeah, I, uh, my name is Joshua Rattle, and I've been working with Kelly for about five years. And, and like her, you know, I, I, spent a lot of time helping people throughout my life. I just truly didn't know what my mission was. I was, you know, really, really an atheist for a long part of my journey, just because I I didn't feel that connection to spirit. I was really kind of living against my soul's purpose, even though I probably signed up for it on a contractual level before I got here. Um, but, but really the last five years, my, after my spiritual awakening, my life just really started taking off. I really started digging into myself, the the harder parts to look at and really doing the inner work to kind of bring me to this level that you uh, you see me at today. And I spend most of that time working with the woman right across from me. So it's been a it's been a beautiful journey. And, you know, I don't believe there's any more freeing work we can do on ourselves. It's a- yeah, it, it is. I spent 25 years doing this work myself and then culling from all of the work that I did, only the stuff that worked. And now that's what I teach in my program. So but we are super excited to be here with you and starting this new podcast. And we're going to have a lot of fun uh, along the way. So I want you to know that in case you missed it from the title, we are a little irreverent and we are kind of potty mouthed. So prepare. Uh, so, but, you know, it, this work, transformational work, I carry the energy of transformation. I am an initiatrix, right? That I initiate people from one state of being to another. And this is this is a lot of really heavy lifting work sometimes. And so we do it with a with a lot of humor and a lot of love because that's how it may you know, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down, right? <laughs> I'm not Mary Poppins, but I kind of am. So <laughs> I can say if it yeah. wasn't if it wasn't for the humor part of the process, I would probably still be in the fetal position somewhere as when I when I came <laughs> <to> this work. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it really is the best medicine to get through it. And, you know, when we can kind of look at ourselves through that, oh shit, you know, because we, we go through so many different shifts as we're doing this work, you know, being able to look at ourselves with humor and just realizing that we're down here having a human experience just you know, it, it really helps with the process. Yeah. So the the other thing you'll notice about this podcast is that we are teaching it outside of a religious context. So oftentimes when you get energetic, magical training, it will come with a religious context, whether that be Wicca or Hermeticism or OTO or Golden Dawn or things like that, even Druid- Druidism and Hinduism and all of these things, right? So it often comes with us with a, a religious context, and we are not doing that. What we're doing is giving you the metaphysics and providing you with practices that will help you to move through your work so that you can then overlay whatever spiritual context you may have. If you if you have a religious context that you want to lay on top of it, it will totally work. And if you don't, it will totally work. So, you know, buckle up and and here we go. We're going to today we're going to talk about the spiritual awakening process because that is something that is So I've been doing this work for professionally for about 25 years. And 
what I have noticed over the last mm, eight years or so, and specifically actually over the last three years or so, is people are waking up at an unprecedented rate. And even more importantly is that the ones who are waking up in the last few years are waking up further along in their journey. So they're waking up with more active gifts. So initially when people would wake up, they would be like, oh, well, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, you know, I'm t- my guides are talking to me and maybe I see something here and there. Now people are waking up going, I see ghosts, I see demons, I see, I see the future, I see, am I crazy? Right. And so we'll talk about that in the next episode. We're actually going to do a, a, a double episode on this, but because it's such an important topic. But that is happening at an unprecedented rate right now. And because of that, we really want to talk about how that works and what it's about and things like that. And so today is going to be all about that. So let's let's first define spiritual awakening. So WTF. Josh, you've re- <laughs> what is a spiritual awakening? You know, yeah. like I, you, you know, you, it? yeah, you, you said something, you know, in the former podcast about, you know, you ask a, you know, hundred shamans what a shaman is, you'll get a hundred different answers. I think you ask anybody who's gone through a spiritual awakening, you'll you'll find the same case. You know, for me, spiritual awakening was. You know, it was kind of twofold. First, I was beginning to see all these different entities that I had no experience with. So as an atheist, all of these constructs came crashing down all at once. And, you know, the second part of the awakening was awakening to my own bullshit into my reality creation and learning that I needed to do some deep work. So I wasn't continuing to manifest these situations across the board. But I want you to know that the beginning of that process took three years and it was a real shit show. So that's why you're listening to this today. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So the the one thing I do want to say is you don't don't panic. Right. Because we've we've kind of said some things that are people might be like, oh, I'm afraid. Right. Don't be afraid. OK, there's a match. So there is a, a part of you that imagines that the work that you would have to do to embrace this would be too much, that you're already holding so much you can't possibly hold more. And the fact is that it is a temporarily temporary thing to look at your stuff and start to deal with it. It is a permanent thing to hold that stuff forever, right? And so, yes, it will temporarily be a little bit more, but it clears the decks for so much more as you work your way through the work. And so, you know, when you're thinking about coming into this work, really consider that that's the case, okay? Because, you know, we go, oh, I can't hold anymore. You are so much stronger than you think you are. If you think about the the times of crisis where you held a lot more than you are holding today that you feel like you can't hold more, right? You can. And if you do that in service to releasing a lot of the stuff that you're holding, then your whole life gets better as you go. Okay. So let's, let's just talk about that. So a spiritual awakening is when you suddenly have this aha moment that that there is more, right? Sometimes people will have an out-of-body experience. Sometimes people will start to see dead people or entities or guides. Sometimes they'll start to hear guides. They'll have knowings that is just this thing in your body that says, oh, I need to do this, right? So an example of that would be my friend Kathy was leaving on a trip to visit her brother two and a half hours away. And I just started packing this little bag full of as much protein dense material as I could. And because I knew she, she packs light, she will not take anything that will not fit in this tiny little suitcase. And so I'm like, this is all that's going to fit, but I really want to give her more, but I know I can't get her to take more. So this is what I'm going to give her. I packed it full. She complained about taking it. She was like, but my brother's only two and a half hours away. It'll be fine. I'm like, I know, just take it. Just, ta- I don't know why, just take it. And so she was like, if it fits on my bag, I'll take it. I'm like, okay. Nine hours later, she call- calls me and says, I am at the airport still. We have not left. All of the food stands are closed. I've eaten everything that you gave me in the bag and I could have eaten more. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> like, yes, okay. But, you know, that was a knowing. I just knew I didn't know why, 
I just knew I needed to give this to her. And so that's a, a sort of an example of a knowing that shows up. And so, you know, we we have these awakenings and we have these knowings or these visions or these hearings or whatever. And and that's what a spiritual awakening is. So let's talk about how that relates to personal healing and personal growth. Okay, because a lot of people right now, because everybody's burned out. I mean, they're all just crispy crittered. Right. And so what I'm seeing right now is five years ago, people were coming in and looking for the personal growth work. They're like, I'm not happy. I want to be happy. I'm stressed out all the time. I want to not be stressed out all of the time. And they were coming in to find a smoother, graceful, more peaceful path for themselves. Now people are coming in going, I want the magic pill. I want to be a magic person. I want to have the gifts and they're they're coming in for that, which there's nothing wrong with that. When I when people were coming in for the personal growth work, I was giving them the energetic work too, because it's necessary, right? But now that people are coming in for the magic work, you gotta get the personal growth work too. Why? Because your limiting beliefs about yourself and your power and your abilities and your good enough will limit your gifts. And so these two things go hand in hand. It also will impact your ability to feel good about yourself, to feel solid and being able to offer your gifts to the world later and things like that. And so as you do your spiritual work, you also need to be doing your personal healing and personal growth work. Now, included in that is going to be identity up leveling, right? So as we grow, we start to see ourselves differently, right? We, we see ourselves less as victims and more as empowered people making conscious choices. And when you can do that, now you're in a position to make more change in your life. And so we'll, we'll be talking a lot about identity up leveling since that's my gift in the world. So I'm not going to go deep into that today, but we're just going to overview it, right? So let's talk a little bit about what is personal healing and growth, right? So, so Josh, you want to take a stab at that one? Personal healing and growth. Sure. You know, so, so for me personally, and, and this really ties in with what you're saying about how the inner work and the energetic work really go hand in hand. So for me, it was really getting at to the core of those limiting beliefs, which we really cover greatly in the, the Welcome to the Woo program. You know, like we I had all these core wounds that came from this life and lifetimes previous to that, that I was, I was just unaware of and why they kept manifesting in my life over and over again. So, you know, and this also ties into the identity up leveling because as we go through that healing journey, we also identify differently we don't see the world the same the same way that we used to and therefore we go through these you know cocoons over and over again just to become different butterflies every single time and uh you know it's really a a unique journey to take and you know i wanted to hit on something you said earlier about spiritual awakening as well and that you know we i think that a lot of people have had those aha moments continuously throughout their life. They just don't see it as that. And then eventually they, they get led to a certain place that ties it in. And I'm hoping that this podcast right here is what helps tie it in for a lot of people because it, it was for me. So listen up. There's a lot of good stuff coming. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. We're going to be talking about some, some interesting stuff. We'll be talking about, you know, ghosts and setting circles and, you know, protective spaces. And we're going to be talking about crystals and angels and all sorts of fun stuff. So there's, there, there's going to be quite a wide swath of stuff we're going to be talking about. But let me give you an idea of what you're going to expect on this journey. So as you're going through your process of identity up leveling, of healing, of awakening to your spiritual gifts and expanding your spiritual gifts, there, there are going to be some things that you go through. You're, you're going to hit resistances and we're going to talk about those. And the resistances are the things that go, no, 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 right? right? Because your, your current sense of self, your current ego self that says, this is who I am, does not want to die, Right. <laughs> And in order for you to become somebody new and, and to evolve into the next level of your, your beingness, 
that part of you does have to die. You have to let go of the old self to step into the new self. That's the nature of the beast. You can't be two people at once unless you have a diagnosis. And so, you know, we're not doing that here. We're going to be stepping from one level into another. And the, the piece of this is that you're going to have to learn how to be comfortable in your discomfort. Okay. And so I want to talk about a comfort zone for a minute. Uh, most people think of their comfort zone as being where they are comfortable. But it isn't actually. It should be more aptly known as a familiar zone. I am familiar with this feeling. And many times your quote unquote comfort zone is very uncomfortable. It's the I am very uncomfortable on a really regular basis, but I'm familiar with this on this discomfort. And therefore, I am going to continue to be in it because I know how to manage it. Right. And so in this case, we're going to be expanding our level of discomfort that we can be with so that we can actually leave that, that familiar zone and move into a, an easier, more calm path. So for me personally, you know, going back about 25 years, so I was getting my divorce at 28 and, uh, and I was in the middle of my Saturn return and I was filled with like, I would have just called myself neurotic at the time. Right. I would have been like, ah, I got so much anxiety. I got so much dread. I got so much self doubt, but no one on the outside would have ever known that. Okay. On the outside, I looked like I had it all together. I was got it. I was perfectionist. I was control freak. I had a plan and a backup plan and a backup plan for my backup plan. And I had it all together because I had to be perfect for people to love me. And over the years, I discovered that, in fact, people love me more when I'm not perfect. <laughs> because perfectionism is a judgment that I place on myself and others. And it is something that, you know, people, people can't connect to. And so I had to learn the hard way how to shift that. Uh, and I also had to learn how to manage my discomfort and my negative thoughts and my inner critic and all of those things. Right. And so we're going to be talking about that too, because, you know, I went from being in that place to now being in a place where I don't have anxiety. I don't have thoughts today where I question whether or not I'm good enough to do this. It just doesn't, doesn't even occur to me anymore. And it used to be the all encompassing thing to me before. I don't worry about what other people think about me. I really just don't. It's not relevant to me. And yet before it used to be everything in my world. And I am also not in a position where I am constantly feeling like I have to be perfect. I give myself a lot of grace. I make a lot of mistakes. I allow myself to be human. And you will find that out on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> F it up, F it up hard. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, you know, this is the thing is when you give your permission, yourself permission to fuck things up on a regular basis, then you give yourself permission to grow and expand. And so, you know, when we worry about being perfect, we, we limit ourselves. And so that's going to be one of the things we'll talk about eventually as well. And so on the journey, what you really should expect is there's going to be times when you're going to take a look at yourself in the mirror and you're going to be like, I don't like that, right? <laughs> and the definition of shadow work is looking at the things that you've shoved into the shadows of your psyche that because you don't want to deal with them, right? But let me say this. Shadow work is an advanced level skill. And I see all the time on the internet where people are going, oh, you have to do your shadow work. You have to do your shadow work. Yes, eventually you have to do your shadow work. But before you do your shadow work, you need to create the bandwidth to change. You need to find mental, emotional, and energetic safety. That's step one. Because until you have those things, you will not have the bandwidth to grow. And if you try to do your shadow work too soon, one of two things will happen. If you have a terrible sense of self-preservation, then you will re-traumatize yourself. If you have a great sense of self-preservation, then nothing will happen and the shadow work won't work. And that's because 
you're not ready to do it. So you have to find the mental, emotional, and energetic safety first, and then you have to find yourself. You have to find your identity. You have to solidify your energetic container because the process of growing up for most of us left us in a position where we really weren't ourselves. We were a reflection of those around us in order to be able to be safe in our, our spaces. And so if you don't have a clear identity as, as somebody other than others, if you are a chameleon, which I used to pride myself on, right, then you don't have a solid sense of identity for yourself. And so the next stage is to claim your space and set your boundaries and own your power and internalize your sense of value. Empty that well of rage that you tap into periodically. Open your heart to receive love and learn how to love yourself. That's the next stage, which is solidifying your sense of self, your identity and your energetic container. Because in the course of stretching your energetic container through all of these experiences that you've had, there have been holes and tears and things in it. And it's very easy to tell if your container is not solid, because if you go to make a decision for yourself, not for other people, but for yourself, that is a more significant one than just a minor thing, right? So, you know, making a big purchase for yourself, you know, making a commitment to make a change, you know, whatever. If you have to run, 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 build up energy, build up energy, build up energy, and then pull the trigger immediately or else all the energy drains out, your energetic container is not solid, Okay. If you can make the decision and hold it for long periods of time without a problem, then your energetic container is solid. That's a very simple way to know whether or not that's that's true. And so that's the second stage that you have to do in order to be able to do your shadow work. And again, if you do it too soon, it's not going to work or it's going to traumatize you. So once you have those first two things done, then you will move into doing shadow work. And that's when it's appropriate to do that. And then I don't hear anybody else talking about this. So I really want you guys to get that. Um, and, you know, if you come to the website, you'll see that we have programs that do these things. But it's super, super important for you to know that these two stages exist before you should ever think about doing shadow work. Um, the other thing I want you to make to make you aware of is 50 years ago, when I first started in the 70s, Everybody who was out there on the market who was doing energetic work, they were all really solid students of this work. Because in the 70s, if you were out in public saying, hey, this stuff works, people thought you were a crackpot and you had to live with the social stigma of being a crackpot. And so only the people who were really devoted to it did. So it was very easy to find a good teacher in the 70s. And I really, so it was harder to find the work because you had to buy it in a book or send away with for a tape series from the back of the book or, you know, whatever. But it, once you had it, it, you knew it was good. I want to caution you because there is so much crap on the internet right now. And a lot of it is actually dangerous. So, you know, for instance, the other day, I had a reporter reach out and they were saying, hey, you know, I want to do this article and I, you know, I want to talk about things like this and, you know, smudging with Laurel and blah, 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 and orange and this, that. And what she meant was creating a smudge pot with Laurel and orange and things like that, which is a, a liquid based uh, saying where you put a, a pot on the stove and you add these ingredients in. But what she said was smudge and smudge is a burning process. And if you burn laurel, it releases cyanide and you could poison yourself. So words matter and knowledge about what's going on matters. And I corrected her and she, she actually published it because the site that she had gotten it from said smudge. And it's like, no, 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 <laughs> you can't do that, right? So these are the, the sorts of things that, that happen and they get propagated. One site publishes it. Somebody else steals the idea from their site. They publish it too. Now you've got 15 sites that have it printed and you're like, oh, well, it must be right because 15 people have it. But no, that's not necessarily the case. And so I feel really bad for people coming in right now because 
they don't know what's true versus what isn't. And there's a lot of marketing bros out there who are taking spiritual aphorisms and spiritual teachings from other people and repackaging them. And they don't even understand them. And they're just repackaging them and selling them. And so I'm really, uh, you know, it's, it's tough for how to figure out how somebody knows what they're talking about. And so you really have to sit in and listen carefully and trust your gut right? Your gut is going to tell you whether or not the person you're talking to actually has a clue. Because, you know, I mean, we just had situations where some of our, uh, some of the leaders in the community just fell from grace and were exposed to have been lying about their past as monks and things like that. And it's like, you know, this is, this is not how this is supposed to be, but it's, how it's become because it's become such a popular thing. So be very careful which where you get your in, information from. I'm going to do my best to debunk a lot of things. If you have any questions, you can come to my website for this podcast at spiritguidespodcast.com. And there is a place where you can just press a button and ask a question and we would love to answer them. Those will be answered on Thursdays when I do my Thursday thoughts. And so I'm happy to do that. Just know that if you do record the question, please let me know whether or not I can record, use the recording. Uh, or if you want me to restate it, that's fine. And, but you know, I, I really want to be here to answer questions for you. I really want to make sure that, that you know what's good information, what's not good information. And then along the lines here, I'm not going to teach you cookie cutter stuff. Okay. I want to teach you how to think about energetics, not how to do a spell or a manifestation by rote, right? I'm not going to teach you, I'm not going to hand you a cookbook. I'm going to teach you the art and science of cooking, right? It's a very different thing. And so as you listen to these episodes, you're going to find that that's the case. The other thing that we're going to do differently here is we're going to break down the barriers between different spiritual practices and so that you can begin to understand how these very deep siloed practices relate to one another. Like that was one of the things that surprised me when I took my Reiki certification 20 years ago because it was taught in a vacuum. It was not taught in, in relationship to any other energetic practice. It was not taught in relation to a larger context. It was just the Reiki. And I understand why that is. But if you understand how the different practices relate, and if you can understand how the vocabularies correlate, because they all use very different vocabularies. And so how are you supposed to know what's what, right? But when you can understand that, you can begin to see a larger picture. We're all looking at the same diamond. Each practice is a different facet of that diamond. And my goal is to help you see as much of the diamond as possible and understand what pieces connect to what pieces so that you can have it structured in your brain in a way that's that's different. And so for those who have been in the practice for a while, that's going to be the thing that you're going to get out of these episodes. We try to make every episode the equivalent of a two-hour class that you would take somewhere. And so this one's really an overview, but as we go, you're going to dive deep and people in, in, in past experiences of doing work like this with people, they've said, oh, I had to listen two and three times before I could get all the information because yeah, I have a tendency to do energetic downloads while I do this too. So I know that's a lot to cover, but I want you guys to really understand what it is that we're coming into and how this, this program works. And this is the inaugural week. And so each each day we're going to be talking a little bit about how that uh, that process works. And then we'll get and then we'll get purely into the uh, the work that we do as we go forward from here. So, Josh, anything else you want to add? I know I've just been sort of monologuing for the last five, ten minutes. <laughs> I just love being in the same space with you. And, you know, when we when we move mountains, we do them one rock at a time. And that's why the, you know, the, the 
uh, as we go through the identity up leveling and the the personal growth, we just we take it one piece at a time so we can get to the other side of it. And that's when we f- truly embody our our magical self. So I'm just so you know so happy to be here and sharing space with you and just being in the the energy of change. And you know I'm just very grateful for the experience to connect with you deeper and connect with all of the listeners. So do you have a Kellyism to lead us out with today? Uh, yeah. So. Ah, uh, let's say a broader perspective gives a deeper understanding. So yes. that's that's my thought for the day. All right. And so that's all we have for this time. Listen in tomorrow. <laughs> and we're going to be getting started on this great journey together. I'm super excited to be here with you. Thanks for coming. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, I'm